In the Bertrand model, firms set their price and then they sell whatever they can at that price. So that price became their strategic variable. In the Cournot model, firms are going to decide how much to produce and then they're going to sell what they've produced at whatever price they can get. So now the quantity they set is their strategic variable. So we want to ask, what's the Nash equilibrium going to look like if you have two firms competing by setting their quantity and then selling at whatever price they can get? So we want to get a best response function for firm 2 that tells us for any quantity of x1, how much should firm 2 produce? And similarly, we'll want to get a best response function for firm 1 that says for any quantity that firm 2 sets, what's firm 1's best response quantity? So let's start with a market where we have a downward sloping market demand curve. If this market was a monopoly, then we would know the marginal revenue curve starts at the same intercept and has twice the slope. To keep things relatively simple, let's suppose that both firms have a constant marginal cost. So there's a constant marginal cost that both firms have. Now if there was a single firm in this market, it would produce where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. So this would be the monopoly quantity. And this marginal revenue curve, since it has twice the slope of the demand curve, will intersect any horizontal line at half the distance. So if we go out to the intersection with the demand curve, we would get two times the monopoly quantity. We can now begin to construct the best response function for firm two. Suppose that firm one produced nothing. Suppose firm one produced zero then firm 2 would be the monopoly, and it would produce the monopoly quantity. So firm 2 will produce the monopoly quantity as a best response if firm 1 produces nothing. Then we can ask, at what level of production for firm 1 will firm 2 simply decide not to produce? So suppose that firm 1 has produced so much that it has driven the price down to marginal cost. At that point, if firm 2 were produced at all, it would drive price below marginal cost. So at that point, it wouldn't want to produce. Well, if firm 1 is producing twice the monopoly quantity, it's producing where marginal cost intersects demand, so it's driven price down to the marginal cost, and if anything more gets produced, price is going to fall below marginal cost. So when firm 1 produces twice the monopoly quantity, firm 2 will produce nothing at all. So we have a second point on firm 2's best response function. If firm 1 produces twice the monopoly quantity, 2 times xm, then firm 2 is going to produce 0. So we have this point as a best response to firm 1 producing twice the monopoly quantity and this point as the best response to firm 1 producing nothing. What about if firm 1 produces something in between? Well, then we can start with our market demand curve and say, whatever quantity that firm 1 produces, we have to subtract that from this demand to figure out how much demand is left over for firm 2. We call that the residual demand curve for firm 2. So suppose that firm 1 is producing the monopoly quantity. So suppose firm 1 is producing this quantity. Then we would have to subtract the monopoly quantity in this picture. So let's start by putting in our marginal cost curve. If firm 1 is producing the monopoly quantity, we subtract that monopoly quantity and we get a new demand curve That's the residual demand curve for firm 2, the leftover demand. And we've, we've subtracted the monopoly quantity. So this here was twice the monopoly quantity. If, subtract, if we subtract the monopoly quantity, this is going to intersect at the monopoly quantity. So now the demand curve that's left over for firm 2 
intersects marginal cost at the monopoly quantity, which means if we could if we put firm two's marginal revenue curve from that residual demand curve into the picture, it's going to intersect at half the distance. So the best response for firm two to firm one producing the monopoly quantity is to produce half the monopoly quantity. So now we have another point on firm two's best response function. If firm one produces the monopoly quantity, firm two is going to produce half the monopoly quantity. Well, if we map this point, it's going to happen at a midpoint of a line that's connecting the more extreme points. And that tells us what the best response function for firm two actually looks like. It's just a straight line. It's just a straight line that has this new best response point on it. And we could have traced that line out by doing that same exercise for any quantity for x1. We would simply subtract from the demand curve, get firm 2's residual demand curve, and figure out where that residual marginal revenue curve intersects marginal cost. So this is firm 2's best response function. It tells us for any quantity of x1, the best response for firm 2. What about the best response function for firm 1? Well, that's going to look very similar because firm 1 is just like firm 2 in this market. It has the same marginal cost. And so if we map out firm 1's best response function, we could do the same thing we just did. We could say if firm 2 produces nothing, then firm 1 is going to produce the monopoly quantity because it is a monopoly. If firm 2 produces twice the monopoly quantity, it will have driven price down the marginal cost and there's no more room for firm 1 to produce anything. We connect those and that gives us firm 1's best response function. To find a Nash equilibrium, we have to find where they are best responding to each other. So by putting those two best response functions into one picture, we can see where they intersect and it's at that intersection point that they're best responding to each other. So we'll put firm 1's, firm 2's best response function here. It has an intercept at the monopoly quantity here and at twice the monopoly quantity here. So it's going to be a straight line like this. Then we put firm 1's best response function in here. It's going to have an intercept at twice the monopoly quantity here and the monopoly quantity here. So we get a line like this. And the two curves intersect at this point. So at this point, if firm 2 is producing this quantity, then firm 1 is best responding on the blue curve by producing this quantity. And if firm 1 produces this quantity, then firm 2 is going to best respond on the magenta curve by producing this quantity. So if they're producing these quantities, they're best responding to each other. And so this will be the Cournot quantity for the two firms. It's going to be the same quantity. And this is going to be our Cournot-Nash equilibrium. In Nash equilibrium, both firms end up producing this quantity.